Any astronomer can tell you about stars or planets, but the good ones also have vacation ideas. Here's Astro Athena to tell us all about space tourism. It's always nice to take some time off and head out for a little vacation. And while some people can't wait to explore our beautiful national parks, or perhaps a warm tropical beach, other people want an experience unlike anything else on Earth. Literally. Hi, I'm Athena, your friendly neighborhood astronomer. And today I'm going to tell you all about space tourism. Since humans could first look up and think about the stars, we've imagined what it would be like to leave Earth and travel there. For most of the history of space travel, if you wanted to get into space, you had to be trained as an astronaut and had to be part of a government space program like NASA. But there were a few people that wanted to travel to space and they were willing to write a check to make it happen. In 2001, an entrepreneur named Denis Tito became the first commercial space tourist when the Russian Space Federation let him tag along on a Russian spacecraft to the International Space Station, where he stayed for almost eight days. We don't have a picture of Denis, so here's a picture of a duck. It's fun to imagine a duck in space, right? <laughs> Five years later, Anusha Ansari became the first female non-astronaut to journey to space for a 10-day trip. This Iranian-born engineer was the fourth space tourist on the planet. Her goal? To inspire young women to never give up on their dreams, even when they're out of this world. Mission accomplished, Anusha. These missions set the template for collaboration between government space programs and private corporations. And today, we have multiple companies that can take both astronauts and tourists to the International Space Station. Right now, space tourism is mostly for people with what astronomers call lots and lots of money. But automobiles and mobile phones were once also high-end luxury items, and now they're enjoyed by millions of people. The hope is that as technology advances, it will bring the price down dramatically, so it's within reach of your everyday average person maybe even down to astronomer prices. And there are nonprofit organizations working to expand space tourism beyond the wealthy. The future of space tourism will likely expand on what's possible right now. Outside of visiting the International Space Station, some orbital flights are already on the market. And we could see stays at commercial space stations that are not yet constructed. Or maybe even trips to the moon. Can you imagine going to the moon on your honeymoon? It's literally in the name. Besides being on a nice little vacation, the future of space tourism could blur the distinction between professional astronauts and private citizens with diverse backgrounds, skill sets, and perspectives. Think of it like citizen astronauts. Not just astronomers like me, but biologists, chemists, programmers, and artists, all types of people. A wide spectrum of perspectives could give us a deeper understanding of the universe. A future where more people can travel to space is a better future for science. In the meantime, if you own one of those space rockets and want to give a ticket to a humble astronomer, I'm available. Just DM me. And always remember, per aspera ad astra. I hope to see you in orbit. Bye. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really, I've seen this one over a hundred times.